open your heart up to a new interpretation that will be given to you from the Holy Spirit if you're willing to receive it. So we're not talking about going around and telling people that they don't exist. Uh, we're not talking about going around and, and trying to deny what the five senses seem to be reporting. It's just gently going in your own mind and saying, well, my five senses are reporting uh, lots of fragmentation based on lots of judgments and concepts and categories that I'm holding on to. And I'm willing to be shown that these judgments and concepts and categories aren't real. I'm willing to have a broader perception of the world than the one that I've held. I'm willing to see the big picture. I'm willing to open my mind up in a, in a much, much broader way. And the adventure of it is that we get to come together on this journey. We're together with the Holy Spirit. We're together with each other. We are like mighty companions to one another, to be uh, supporters, nurturers, to be gentle reminders of the way back home, to, to provide a gentle encouragement to our brothers and sisters along the way, and therefore receive the blessing of that gentleness ourselves. We're really not here to correct a brother, uh, unless Unless a, a brother or a sister uh, is working with us in a very close relationship and has voluntarily said, you know, um, please could you point out anything that you see that's, that's ego or could you please help me? I've got a lot of blind spots and I need you, my employee relationship partner or my, my uh, teacher, or my student, whatever, I need you to help me catch the blind spots, then that's like an open invitation. But generally those kind of invitations are really relatively few, considering all the people that we interact with. We're not getting these, they're not signing a contract with us, you know, please point out everything you see uh, to me. It's really not that at all. So you realize that you have to let, pay close attention to your emotions, let the emotions surface really for your own mind training and pay close attention to your own thoughts in order to be free of these uh, ego attack, attack thoughts. But it's not really about correcting brothers and sisters along the way. It's a full-time job, I always say, minding your own mind. Uh, and so it's good to just think of it as if really you know that the teachings tell you that everything is unified and there's just one awareness. But even when you're practicing, it's good to think of it as, oh, okay, this is my, my lesson, my reason to be attentive has to do for my own mind training. It's not, as they say, oh, I, I have to give this course to my boyfriend or girlfriend, or uh, oftentimes people will say it's the first thought they have is, oh, this course would be good for, for this person. Uh, but it's not really about that, it's really about gently looking at things for ourselves. So these workshops, uh, this uh, afternoon workshop we have, it can be a very interactive workshop. I always am very transparent and I love it when you just bring up topics, bring up questions, uh, ask anything that you'd like to ask. If there aren't any good questions or bad questions and there's no, uh, nothing that's embarrassing or Nothing that my life is private or secret. So, and really, we're one lesson is everyone's lesson. We're all in this together. So, to the extent that you feel like you want to explore uh, an area that you're having an issue with, please feel free to do so. And we'll have a, it'll be kind of a question and answer dynamic this afternoon. And I just really go wherever there's a strong call. Um, I think. This deep, deep feeling of contentment has just grown stronger and stronger. So I really, I really haven't felt for many years like impelled to um, to travel or to, to do a lot of gatherings. In fact, um, generally when I'm at my little peace house in the United States, it's, it's 
pretty quiet, simple life, uh, playing with the three-legged cat and doing some eye-gazing exercises uh, with the cat. It's a common thing for me during the day. I always had lots of periods during the day where I would spend a little time with tripod and, and my other cat, Sam, who's, who's so in the present moment that he, he just sometimes looks at you as if he's never seen you before. Almost a cat with spiritual dementia uh, just has, looks at you like, who are you? What are you doing in my house? Uh, and I would get that occasion from tripod when I would go on these trips before when I had been away for weeks or months. It was just, she was just giving me a look like, who are you? Uh, but now I get that quite often from both cats. When they're not laying on their backs and just sticking their paws in the air and, and just stretched out like they have the care in the world. And, and that's really what the goal of all the spine training is, is mm -hmm. to, to just reach a state of stable peace of mind where you don't have the care in the world. You don't know uh, particularly what day it is. Uh, I've had to do that for years, just have a, a little magnetic uh, sticker uh, to remind me when to put the garbage on because it's like the one day of the week that I have to know what day it is and the rest I can just let it blend into, it's just the now. Now, now, now. Oh, it's Thursday night, it's time to put the garbage out, <laughs> put the sticker up. And when I travel, you know, it's the time when I actually put a watch on and, uh, and try to keep track of the days a little bit uh, so I can show up where I'm scheduled to be. But other than that, it's, it's very much of a, a sense of uh, letting go. And also for years I've been teaching a line from A Course in Miracles that says the script is written. It was interesting this year for me because uh, I went to see the night before the Academy Awards, before they were passing out the Oscars, I went to see uh, Slumdog Millionaire, uh, which a number of people when I was traveling in Europe said, oh, you must see Slumdog Millionaire. It's teaching the same teaching of the Course that the script is written. That, that there's a destiny to everything that's playing out, like Veda, Vedanta, and many the Vedas teach and so forth. And I definitely wasn't disappointed with that movie because it just got better and better and better. And at the end, I just felt like this bursting love uh, for this feeling that that the script is written. That as Ramana Maharshi, uh, the Indian uh, saint, would say that. Uh, if something's meant to happen, you can't do anything to stop it from happening. And if something is not meant to happen, you can't make it happen. Uh, there's such peace when you really start to relax into that idea that, that the, the script and the activities and the events of your life, which seem to be at least partially under conscious control, uh, are really part of a prearranged plan and that you really can't mess it up. Uh, you can just shift your mind and see it in a new way and that is just spectacular. You, you reach a high state of mind and your mind is highly trained where you do see that all things work together for good and it doesn't so much matter what seems to be happening. Uh, your perspective has been lifted up and you're just in this state of peace knowing that Everything is just perfect as is. But it's just these ego goals and these ego identities that have enormous reactions to the script because it seems to be to the ego some, some events and outcomes and circumstances are highly preferable and some are not. Uh, some seem to be ex labeled as extremely negative experiences and some are rather positive, but that's really what the mind training is doing, is it's, it's lifting you out of this judgment of positive and negative and just taking you to this, this pinpoint of stillness where you experience the divine order, that everything is in perfect order. And so that's been 